Thank you. I was thinking that when we go like this. Oh, there you go. Well, that's, a good PR that's, that's a good stop. I like that. I now call this uh, regular meeting of the Board of Education to order at 7.01 p.m. We'll take a moment of silence to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll have the coordinator call the roll. Ms. Jackson, Mr. Rollins. Here. Mr. Scrivano? Here. Mrs. McCulloch? Here. Mr. Siegel? Here. Mr. Connor? Here. Ms. Jessica Bathel? Here. With six present, one absent, we have a quorum. Thank you. I'm told we have two students here tonight for helping with the broadcast. Uh, Rod Waddell and Jonathan Mendewano. Thank you for being here, but I only see one of you. But, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. We have set aside time uh, on, in our agenda tonight for a public hearing on the Bond Issue Notification Act. We have no speakers for tonight, um, so I will proceed unless there are board member comments specific to the, the Bond Issue Notification Act. No? Okay. Thank you. So, recognition. We have... Um, CFNIL grant winners, Mr. Dotson. Community Foundation. Yes, sir. Okay. Good evening and thank you. The community, the community Foundation of Northern Illinois announced 45 grant awards earlier this month for our community. Rockford Public Schools students and staff are the most excited about two of them that will have a direct impact on our students. Whitehead Elementary School received a grant for $11,200 for staff to collaborate with Rockford University Education Department. Rockford University students will tutor Whitehead students for 90 minutes per week, four times each week. They'll focus on numeracy, literacy, and language arts. Thanks to Pam Miner, who unfortunately couldn't be here with us this evening. Uh, she is the Whitehead principal for securing this grant. First Robotics received a grant for $73,100 over two years. RPS 205 will establish after school robotics teams in every school to help increase students' technical skills in this STEM activity. With help from Chris McGee, Guilford Academy's coach and Rockford Robotics guru. All right. Th <laughs> this grant <laughs> this grant will continue to ensure RPS 205 is building the next generation of manufacturing professionals for our community. We want to say a special thanks to the Community Foundation of Northern Illinois. This organization has been a regional leader in philanthropy since 1953. Since 2000, the Community Foundation of Northern Illinois has granted more than $46 million for charitable purposes, some of which has helped Rockford Public Schools and its students. Uh, and we certainly have uh, members uh, from the Community Foundation who are here with us this evening. Uh, certainly Chris McGee is also here as well. Please join me in giving them a round of applause for this wonderful conference. Very excited. 
exciting. Thank it you is. so much. We think it is. Uh, I agree. Uh, uh, so much. So, um, I got a microphone, right. so of course I said yes. Um, so I just want to thank you guys for supporting um, the robotics initiative that we're, we're trying to roll out here in the Rockford Public Schools. Um, I just came from Rock Valley College where they announced their wonderful partnership with NIU. And um, so I think this program will help allow us to get students engaged as early as first and second grade, keep them engaged all the way through high school and then roll them into Rock Valley and NIU's program and then into the manufacturing jobs that we so desperately need to fill here in our community. So um, thank you for helping me with this huge endeavor and uh, hopefully it's just the beginning of some really amazing things. So thank you very right. much. Very briefly, uh, the Community Foundation announced last year a focus on what we call Education Works. And we just want you to know that we know that Education Works, and we know how hard you and the staff and the teachers of RPS work to make Education Works. So it's such a thrill for us to make a grant to the Rockford Public Schools because we know that it is a great investment. So congratulations to Rockford Public Schools. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That is all. Sure. Are there any uh, board member comments at this time? I can operate my microphone right, this time. Mr. Siegel. <laughs> this is my first full board meeting and I want to say it's a really humbling prospect to sit in Mike Harner's seat. He was enormously generous with his time in, um, in what he could do to get me up to speed. And I, I'm certain that if this community could have met, um, met him personally, um, the District 205 would be considered just the greatest you know, school district around. Uh, really great guy, and I hope I don't mess it up for him. <laughs> well, great, thank One you. Quick. Mr. Connor. Um, in line with the comment on the wonderful robotics program, um, I do want to ask that we do look into other areas like that, and I know we've talked about um, uh, coding or programming and other programs. Uh, I think there's a lot of industries, CNC, there's all, all kinds, even automotive, where a lot of that is... Um, I would say uh, integrated now pretty heavily. So I think there's a number of programs and really kudos to the community foundation. I think this sets the standard for us to do other similar types of programs with other needs for the Rockford community. So thanks. Thank you. Ms. McCulloch. One of the reasons I think that our robotics has moved and gone and done what it has in this whole system is because it has been spearheaded, pushed, um, cajoled um, I mean, from every angle by an individual. And it takes that, um, I, it, it's just amazing to me. And, and I thank you so much, Ms. McGee. <laughs> and we've known each other. She was my daughter's swim coach when okay. <laughs> she first started long ago. And But this has nothing to do with um, us, you know, with us as a district having really put so much forward. I mean, it, we, we have... We have been there to help support the movement, but the movement's been very internal and very driven by a core group of people. And so I just can't thank them enough, I, having watched the growth. And all I can do is hope, Mike, that um, there is a similar, somebody with a passion that is willing to move us forward on that, that tech front. And maybe we need to look within our gaming clubs now that we have these competitors. I mean, because we've got some great um, tech kids in those groups. So, but thank you again. <clears throat> Mr. Rollins. Well, I'd also like to thank Ms. McGee, but, and, but also the individual coaches. The last time I talked to Ms. McGee, I mean, the, our ability to grow this program really depends on our ability to find coaches for the teams. And uh, so I'll use my uh, airtime tonight to 
if anybody's watching, if you think you might have an interest, if you think you know somebody who might have an interest, we have schools that still don't have these robot robotics programs, and um, and they need and because they don't have the coaches. So if there's anybody out there who thinks they might have an interest, might, might want to get involved, great program. Um, please consider contacting the, the district. Ms. McGee, if you can find her contact information, she's the best person to talk to. Great. I just wanted to add a comment that you know um, I'm hope hopefully we'll continue with the. Uh, and I don't know if Dr. Jarrett's going to talk about this in his report about the uh, uh, tours that we've been given for the schools. I don't know if that's on your but I mean, what a great opportunity to showcase robotics to our community as we do these community tours for various people in our, in our, in our region. So I'll uh, encourage that. So, okay. One quick. Sure. So, yeah, I guess I just want to echo everyone. I think uh, I had something to say, but everything that I wanted to say has been already said. Uh, seriously, I, I mean, uh, those of us have worked a little bit with Chris, her team, coaches. I mean, um, these individuals really put in a lot of time. They donate a lot of their time. And when I say a lot, I mean, uh, it's nights, weekends, preparing for the tournaments. Uh, a lot of volunteers um, that really you know, take a lot of time to volunteer and support this. It's, it's amazing. I guess thanks to uh, Community Foundation of Northern Illinois, I think I spoke a little bit about the, uh, this last uh, last board meeting about the importance and um, how much it plays a role into our local industry and supporting an industry uh, and growth of our students. So can't say enough thanks to all the folks, uh, the coaches, Chris, everyone for supporting our Rockford Robotics. Thank you. And you're coaching. Are you coaching? I'm not coaching this year. No. Okay. But you coach but in you the have. past. Yeah. You have coached. So on top of the, all your board yeah. work and the like. Thank you for that. Honey. Okay, I think we'll move on then to the consent portion of our agenda, including the following items. The meeting minutes of February 9th, 2016, purchase orders, payroll, accounts payable, contracts under 10000 construction bid pay request log, and travel. Following bid recommendations for IFB 16-13, which is low voltage electrical and generator maintenance and repairs, IFB 16-28, which is the Marsh Elementary School asbestos abatement project, the IFB 16-29 Westview Elementary School asbestos abatement project, IFB 16-30, the Gregory Elementary School asbestos abatement project, and the uh, following other consent items, including the financial results year to date, January through uh, 2016, the interest, interest transfer for January, the uh, quality uh, quarterly treasurer's report for the second quarter ending December 31st, 2015, advanced placement grant, monthly investment report, the uh, workers' compensation settlement agreement, and the freedom of information um, log. Is there a motion to second to approve these consent items? So moved. Moved by Mr. Connor. Second. Second by Mr. Rollins. Are there any consent items that board members wish to have pulled for separate consideration? Seeing none, I have the coordinator then call the roll on the approval of the consent items. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Rollins? Yes. Mr. Scrivano? Yes. Mrs. McCulloch? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Escobedo? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. We are now at the closed session consent agenda items, including the appointment of Ann Beto as a 12-month certified director in professional development the HR organizational report and addendum, and student discipline in which expelled or suspended students are prohibited from being on school grounds and school-sponsored activities without the prior written permission of the principal. The expulsion for SSB-5 is held in abeyance, contingent upon an, an EIA, an expulsion and abeyance agreement, for the remainder of this school year and the first semester of next school year. The expulsion for ZLH-8, is held in abeyance contingent upon an EIA for the remainder of this school year and the first trimester of next year. And the A student AAV-9 is expelled for the remainder of this school year and all of next school year. The following students have been granted a conditional probationary agreement or an EIA, which is the following students, DS1, MCB2, SNAS3, AG4, CRFW6, DJJ7, J A G 10, A I N J 11, D L Y S 12, K D G 13, and D T R 14. 
Is there a motion and a second to approve the closed session consent items? So moved. Moved by Mr. Connor. Second. Second by Mr. Rollins. Are there any items that board members wish to have pulled for separate consideration? Ms. Jackson? 11, 12, 13. 11, 12, and 13. Okay. And we all of them. So I will take a motion now and a second to approve um, I, uh, 11, which is the appointment of Ann Beto and the HR organization report. So moved. Moved by Mr. Connor. Second. Second by Mr. Rollins. The coordinator call the roll on the approval of, of consent, closed session consent item 11. Mr. Scrivano? Yes. Mrs. McCulloch? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Escobedo? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Abstain. Mr. Rollins? Yes. The motion passes with six yeses and one abstain. Ms. Jackson, can I do 12 and 13 together? Yes. Okay. Take a motion and a second then for uh, items 12 and 13, which are the student discipline. So moved. Moved by Mr. Connor? Second. Second by Mr. Rollins. Have the coordinator call the roll on the approval of closed session consent items 12 and 13. Mrs. McCulloch? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Escobedo? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Abstain. Mr. Rollins? Yes. Mr. Scrivano? Yes. The motion passes with six yeses and one abstain. Thank you. Our next agenda item is a superintendent's report. Dr. Chair. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Scrivano. Uh, first of all, I want to reiterate the uh, well-deserved recognition for Pam Miner, uh, Whitehead, and also Chris McGee for the robotics grant uh, with Community Foundation. Really excited about the, the work that's going to be done in our schools and appreciative of our strong partnership with the Community Foundation. And while Chris is here, I, Mr. Scrivano already uh, sp spent a little bit of time talking about the, the superintendent's update. I talked a little bit about student-led tours. And I'm really, really proud of the students at both Auburn High School, led by Jay Larson, and Guilford High School, led by Chris McGee. There was a tremendous amount of work that went into student-led tours. We started with a group of 20 realtors and some HR department representatives. And it was really, really gratifying to see the articulate way in which our students talked about high school both the facilities as well as what the high school academy model meant to the students in the schools. It was really, really powerful to hear direct hear that voice. Uh, the feedback we received from the community members that were on that tour uh, really reaffirmed the enthusiasm that I was feeling coming off that. And really looking forward to the board and many other community groups getting the same opportunity. I know Jefferson and East are anxious to do the, do the work as well, and we're hopeful that We'll even do some of this work at the elementary and the middle school level eventually. So kudos to to Chris, Jay, and the and the students that helped do that. The principals also had some involvement in it. It was a really really big day for the Rockford Public Schools when you can when you can have students articulating with such great passion why they feel strongly about the work that's going on in their respective high schools. I uh, also want to give some kudos to our board. Uh, we had three times a year our board, in addition to all the time they give for com for committee meetings, preparation, two board meetings, they, they come in on a Saturday morning. And we I felt like we got a lot of work done at our quarterly board retreat. I guess it's really three times a year now. Uh, so we did scale back a little bit from four to three. But uh, I, I always feel like there's a it takes a tremendous amount of dedication to to do the regular board schedule and I'm so I've always been impressed with this board's willingness to put in the time to talk about issues like our park scores to talk about issues like how we can better utilize our committee structure and how we can have a scoreboard that can keep us moving forward in a, in a positive way I thought we got a lot done in three and a half hours and uh, very appreciative to, to our board members for uh, doing such a great job of leading us through that process and finally I'd like to cede the, the rest of my time to, to Bridget French from Alignment Rockford, the executive director. Uh, we've got a really great partnership with Alignment Rockford and some outstanding outcomes have, have been a part of this multi-year partnership. The district funds about one-third 
of the cost for Alignment Rockford to run, and, and, and Bridget will share some of the details. But I think it's important on a regular basis that you hear directly from Bridget about the work that's getting done and the great benefit it has on our school district and the community. So with that, I'm going to cede the floor to Bridget. Thank you so much, Aaron, and thank you all for having me here this evening. Um, as Aaron said, we're going to uh, definitely make a point to um, be here more often to let you know what we're working on. And want to thank you again for the opportunity um, for um, allowing me to speak. And thank you, Dr. Jarrett, for, for giving me some of your time tonight. Um, Alignment Rockford exists to serve the Rockford Public Schools. Everything we do is in response to a need that is has been identified by the Rockford Public Schools strategic pr plan. And I'm thankful over the past um, year and a half that I've been um, the executive director to be a part of this community of practice. Alignment Rockford was the second of um, all of the alignment communities that have now become a part of what's called Alignment USA. So definitely we are known um, in the nation as a trendsetter and as a model for success. So thank you to your support because without that, um, that would not have happened. So we currently have five teams that are working to support the district strategic plan. Um, we um, call them the bookends of education as the Healthy Starts team is focused on early childhood and the other four teams are focused on college and career readiness. Our Healthy Starts team in 2015 spent quite a bit of time um, working on a, a kindergarten campaign to help parents understand what it means to be ready for kindergarten. We distributed over 20,000 brochures and 100 posters to various locations, and we also set up a website um, just to house information that would be uh, relevant to parents, um, not just in the district, but this is our only team actually that focuses on a regional approach. Um, so that's why these materials are, are on a, a separate website besides the district website, and that's because um, the Healthy Starts team has, has taken on a regional approach to um, early childhood because we know that although um, we're focused on the kindergartners in the Rockford Public Schools, those kindergartners are coming from all over our community. And then in the, in the latter portion of 2015, we spent time developing these benchmarks. So what's a little bit different for Alignment Rockford is that when you think about the college and career readiness benchmarks, those are benchmarks that are uh, presented to our teams and we work to develop experiences around those benchmarks that have already been set by the district. But since our Healthy Starts team is now a regional team, um, we didn't have anything regional that we felt was really a, a kind of an umbrella for the, some of the benchmarks that we want to in, achieve to ensure that all children coming into kindergarten are ready. Um, so we vetted these through the Office of Early Childhood through the state of Illinois. Um, we worked with the United Way, um, the uh, city's human services department, many, many other social service agencies. We've been taking these benchmarks through um, many stakeholders to ensure that everyone sees these as common goals. Um, also in uh, 2015, we became reactivated in our College and Career Readiness Councils and Academy support teams. So if you recall the alignment process, our, our process is one in which we pilot scale up and turn something over to the district or another organization to institutionalize. And the CCRCs and ASTs have been institutionalized, but when we started um, kind of rebuilding some of our relationships with district staff, when um, after uh, my predecessor left and we had some staff turnover, um, we wanted to ensure that the community support was 100% stable and do everything we can to make sure that we're supporting our academies everywhere, every way that we can. So Katie Hahn in my office, she's our community engagement coordinator. She's developed a couple documents that I feel have been really useful to our um, college and career readiness councils and our academy support teams. And one's is the needs and successes list so that when um, our schools and our academies have a need, they know the process to go through to get that need filled. So of course we want it to try to be filled at the school level first by the academy support team second, by the college and career readiness council third, and if that, then it can't be met, it comes to alignment Rockford's board to try to meet that need for community um, resources. And so this is a, it, it's in its most basic form is a spreadsheet, but we review these 
all the time with our academy coaches who we work very closely with to ensure that all of their needs are being met. So um, from materials to people, we are always ensuring that, um, that our academies are being supported. Um, as you know, our Academy Expo um, was bigger than ever this year. We had 3,000 students come through. We had 150 booths, and we had over 900 volunteers who supported that event this year. Um, again, you know, we always look back and see things that we could be doing different as far as logistics goes, but overall, um, the students really felt that they um, that the experience was worthwhile. Um, approximately 85% of the students said that th the Academy Expo either helped affirm their Academy selection or it helped them make their Academy selection, which I think is significant and obviously is the greatest outcome we hope to achieve from that event. Um, we hosted sophomore site visits, um, which is a college and career readiness benchmark. Um, 75 businesses signed up to host. Uh, 56 businesses were visited by students. And um, some really great outcomes. Again, we not only want and work to ensure that students are visiting businesses that align with their pathway, but they're also seeing different kinds of businesses in their pathway. So if they're going to an architectural firm, they're visiting a small firm and a large firm. So they're not only um, seeing that relevant career to curriculum connection, but they're thinking about what types of businesses they might want to work in in the future. And then we started working um, with Rockford Public Schools and their uh, team of uh, teachers and professionals that are working to develop a senior capstone course. Right now it's being piloted at Auburn in their Renaissance class and this spring at Roosevelt. So um, we worked last year to um, develop uh, support services for making communi community connections to those Renaissance students who are working on the, the capstone courses. And then at Kennedy, um, we piloted a mentor tutor program, which is modeled off of the program that um, UTC runs at Lincoln. And um, we've seen some pretty significant results. Um, the DEA scores of the students participating have increased 5%. Um, from the beginning to the middle of the year, and their star scores have increased an average of 53 points. So we're, we're really excited to see these early, early results. And um, even more so than that, the students' um, quanti qualitative um, responses have really been uh, very positive about the relationships that we've had, or we've seen them having with the tutors. And um, just that relationship piece, as you know, is so critical. And then, um, as you know, many of you um, were there. We had an Alignment Institute in October where we have 40 visitors from all over the Midwest come to Rockford to see what we do and how we do it and how the partnership between the Rockford Public Schools and Alignment Rockford works. And then a culmination of that event was the Ford Next Generation Learning Announcement uh, designating um, Rockford the third model community, which I know you're very well aware of and we're very proud to have been a part of that. And then our college readiness team also um, is working to support uh, the Lumina Foundation grant that Alignment Rockford wrote and received. And I'll go into that in a little bit more detail in just a second. So that was a quick look back at 2015 and 2016. We're gonna continue our work with the capstone projects. We're gonna be focusing on Roosevelt this year or this, this uh, semester. One of the things that we found was that we were actually trying to match each individual student's needs with a community member. And one of the most profound moments was when we were at Auburn and we were talking to a student in the Renaissance program and she said one of the things that she learned was how to write an email, a professional email to a business person. And it, and, and it really kind of made us take a step back and look at um, the, the community service that we're providing to our students the old adage of, you know, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, but teach a man to fish, you, you feed him for a lifetime is, is kind of the approach we're taking now with the capstone projects and that we want to connect students who can help them, um, help them make the connections to the community and help them learn how to communicate and present and interview and those types of things instead of just giving them the resource that they've asked for. Uh, we will continue to work with Kennedy um, on the uh, middle school math tutor pilot. 
We are having some initial conversations with the YMCA. They run the Big Brothers Big Sisters program, and they're interested in helping us manage some of the administrative, you know, coordinating of volunteers. And this is a really good fit for them since it's something that they already do. So we're working on, you know, how do we um, grow the program and make it sustainable? And so those conversations are in the very early stages, but we're really excited about where that might go. And then our college readiness team is also talking about um, the, the college and career readiness benchmark of university site visits. Um, the Wabongo Leadership Council has a great model that they have employed um, to help get some of our students university visits, but we really want to ensure that all of our students are getting, um, having the opportunity to visit a university. And then our Pathways team has done teacher externships and we've done um, student site visits and now we're looking at how do we provide 11th grade job shadow opportunities for students. And when we were looking at, you know, well, what do the students need? What do the students need? We thought, well, who's the, who's the best person to know what the students need? And that's the teachers. So we have a group of teachers that are going to be piloting a student job shadow experience at UTC um, in a few weeks. And they're going to actually go through the day as a student would. And then we're going to meet in the afternoon after their experience. And we're going to talk about what worked, what didn't. Um, how do we model this to make sure it's the absolute best job shadow experience for students. And then we'll actually run the students through the same job shadow that the teachers will have gone through just a few weeks prior. So. We're excited about that as well. Um, as you may have heard, the Academy Expo this year is going to be um, supporting only Rockford Public School students. We felt that um, it's important for us to ensure that we are focusing on our core mission, which is to support the Rockford Public Schools. And um, some of the reasons that we had um, looked at to including other school districts um, were definitely advantageous to our partnerships in the community. However, our board felt that it was important for us to stay true to our mission. And so this year, the Academy Expo will be only for Rockford Public School students. And that is taking place on October 6th. And then again, college and career readiness, you know, one of the things we've talked about in the job shadowing and, and through all the college and career readiness benchmarks is what, what you know, we really want to um, ensure that our community is supporting is that our students are, you know, first learning about work, then they're learning, learning through work by watching someone work, and then they're learning for work. So they're working and someone else is watching them. So that's sort of the cadence that we're, we're working through through all of these experiences that we're connecting to the college and career readiness benchmarks. And then I mentioned our Healthy Starts team. That team has broken out into two subgroups, and we are working on um, piloting uh, two different um, programs based on the two goals that are circled on the screen. All children are healthy, physical, emotional, and social. And all children have experiences that engage cognitive development and social emotional growth. We have some exciting partnerships that we think are going to help us create some really robustness in these programs. We have um, Northern Illinois University. Um, they have a P20 council that um, prior to um, some of the conversation that Dr. Jarrett had with NIU's president, um, Doug Baker, um, didn't exist. So they didn't have a real strong focus on early childhood, which now they do. And they're extending that partnership to Alignment Rockford into the Rockford Public Schools. So they're going to not only deploy some of their staff on our Healthy Starts team, but they have also offer, offered us some graduate students to help with any kind of um, research or work that we might need from them. And additionally, um, the Rockford Housing Authority and um, the Human Services Department for the City of Rockford are working on um, securing a VISTA who would work um, exclusively um, with Alignment Rockford's Healthy Starts team to help us advance this work. And um, we have made the decision to pilot whatever we decide that these programs are going to do and what they're going to look like in the Fairgrounds Valley um, Rockford Housing Authority um, development. And that is for a couple reasons. Um, one is because uh, we are partnering with United Way and in part of their place-based strategies, Ellis Heights is part of that. And um, also Fairgrounds has um, is the highest population of all of the housing authorities' developments of children and, and residents alone. 
Um, and three, as a part of a grant that the Housing Authority received, they are surveying all of their residents and asking them questions about their early childhood, their health, their social emotional experiences. And the Housing Authority has agreed to um, share that data with us to help um, form some baseline uh, data for creating these programs. So we feel like all of these things are sort of coming together at the same time, which makes for a great synergy, and we hope that this will really um, help make our work robust as we, as we move forward. And then we are also working on a, a grant that we received from the Lumina Foundation. Uh, this was a grant that uh, we were invited to apply for and we received at the beginning of 2015 and the purpose of this is to uh, increase post-secondary attainment for our region and so there were three areas which were, which were identified in the grant. One is to help create uh, college and career readiness benchmark guides and um, David Carson and his academy coaches and the counselors are working to um, they worked last summer to create these. They're using them this year and then we'll tweak them this summer. And those basically identify the roles of everyone involved from you know, faculty and staff to community members in the academies and what does that look like, how is it measured, and why is it important. And then secondly, um, Rockford Public Schools Business Department um, and the Rock Valley College's uh, Business Department is working on curriculum alignment and competency-based education pilot. And what that means is that um, if you attend Rock Valley, um, you could in essence demonstrate a level of competencies in business and earn your associate's degree without enrolling in traditional credit courses. So instead of enrolling in a course, you would um, enroll in a session and have to, um, it's in essence an independent study in which you would have to demonstrate a certain level of competency to get your degree. And why, um, why it's important that Rockford Public Schools is involved is that the business courses that are being taught here are directly aligned to the, the business courses that are taught at Rock Valley to make that connection. And then the third area is summer melt, which is um, when students enroll in college um, and then for whatever reason over summer decide not to go. And this is pretty common in low income households where students think about going to college and then over the course of the summer they end up getting a full time job and find that the money is um, helping support their family or um, whatever the circumstances might be and then end up just not going in addition to all of the different kinds of paperwork and things that you have to do to get into college that um, you know a lot of families of students in our district might not have the resources to do. So a summer melt program would help identify students at Rockford Public Schools who are thinking about going to Rock Valley and providing the support systems for them throughout the summer to ensure that they have everything they need to get over that finish line and get into college. Um, so I know that that was a lot of information and probably took up more time than I was allotted. So thank you for your patience. Um, I again want to just really sincerely thank you for your support and your partnership. And um, I really um, am very thankful for everyone that I get to work with every day in the Rockford Public Schools. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Are there any board member comments or questions? Mr. Connor? Uh, one question about early childhood. Um, I know we can't count on it, but I know the state has been talking about some early childhood funding. And what I wonder is, these are it's a great effort and Healthy Start's a great program. But two questions is, one is, have you heard anything on any potential impact from the state funding? And two is, uh, where do you see the biggest impact, uh, obviously, on the educational side for, uh, for Healthy Starts? Um, I'd probably defer to Aaron on the state funding question. I haven't heard anything, to be honest with you, besides it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as the biggest impact goes, you know, we, we talk a lot about coordinated intake and making sure that there's a system that everyone understands how to navigate. Um, because that's a serious issue in our community. And so that's definitely something that we're taking a look at. But um, I think when we think about supporting um, all of the children in our, uh, in our community, we also have to think about how do we support the families and the parents as well. And so there's a lot of discussions going on right now about um, you know, what grants are available to help support um, any kind of wraparound services for families as well. Because if we don't support the families and we're only supporting the children, then we're not going to get them all the way there. So, 
the state funding situation, uh, there is money uh, in the in the governor's budget recommendation, uh, but we're a uh, long way away from having a budget for the, this current fiscal year, let alone the, the, the next one. But it is encouraging that there are additional dollars allocated, at least in the governor's initial budget proposal. Mr. Rollins? On the early childhood, the healthy starts, I guess, um, for these benchmarks, do you have baseline data? And I guess secondary to that, some of these look like they might be kind of hard to measure. So I guess I'm, I'm wondering how easy it is to get baseline data and how you'll measure growth. Yeah, that's what we're working on right now. So the two sub teams right now are looking at one, best practices throughout the nation, and then two, what is the baseline data and how do we get it? So yes, you are absolutely right that those are gonna be two very difficult things to um, get baseline data for, but we're confident that in the partnerships with NIU and um, the Office of Early Childhood has offered to, to help us with that as well. Yeah, I'm wondering if you can elaborate a little bit on the Academy Expo. So I know, I know it's hard to quantify, but you know, as far as the impact that this have on our students, um, so I know that the, you know, I've personally seen how how important this is to some of the kids that you know they now all of a sudden get to see. A lot of these kids never even realized that mm -hmm. we have all this in our community. Right. They are all of a sudden realizing that there's all these people in the community who are not just uh, you know, industry leaders, but maybe even traveling around the world. And some of these kids were just in shock and awe mm -hmm. to see some of this and maybe even hopefully motivated. So I'm just kind of wondering if you have any numbers to, uh, or any data to as far as, you know, the impact that we're uh, having with the Academy Expos. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have any quantitative data. Um, you know, we de definitely survey all the students and all the businesses, and um, we hear a lot of positive comments. I mean, one of the things we think is great is that I think it was 91 percent, 90 or 91 percent of students said they would recommend to another student that they should go to the Academy Expo, which if you think about ninth graders, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Um, and then almost all the students said they want more time, which is another reason why we really were um, focused on making sure that we're doing everything we can for Rockford Public School students is because we overwhelmingly have heard for the past few years, we want more time, we want more time. And so by going back to Rockford only, we'll be able to provide more time for students to be able to give them those experiences. And another, a third interesting point is that a lot of students um, are irritated that we force them to go to every academy because a lot of students think that they already know what area they want to go into and they don't want to have to go into health sciences if they already know they want to be an engineer. But then after the event, we find that they were glad that they did. So I know that's not any real hard data numbers. And we have all the survey data. I'd be happy to show you. But, um, you know, I look at this as a huge business retention and um, recruitment tool for Alignment Rockford. Because, you know, when we first started doing the Academy Expo, um, it was it was a recruitment tool for us because they would go in and they'd meet the kids and they would just be so impressed by them they wanted to come back and help. And now it's something that businesses look forward to. But, you know, being at um, Guilford and Jefferson and East and Auburn for some of these tours and hearing students say, well, I chose this because I was at the Academy Expo and I saw this. is just really fulfilling, you know, so. Anyone else? Thank you for your great presentation thank and thank you, you for your much. partnership because we couldn't do it alone. We need you and we're very pleased with the outcome that we have accomplished thank so you. far. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Committee reports. Ms. McCulloch, the Education Committee report. Education Committee did not meet for the month of February and will not meet again until the third Tuesday in March, okay. which is after the next board meeting. So I have no report. Okay. Mr. Rollins, uh, Operations Committee. Operations Committee also has not met since the last board meeting, but we'll meet in this room one week from tonight, which I believe is Super Tuesday, Tuesday, March 1st at 5.30 <laughs> p.m. So vote before you come to the Operations Committee meeting. Okay. okay. We'll move on then to action uh, items. Our first action item tonight is the contract for professional development for arts-related grants 
Mr. Stewart Stotts, Dusty Rhodes Production that Dr. Wolf presented. There's a motion a second to approve this contract. So moved. Moved by Mr. Second. Connor. Second by Mr. Rollins. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, I'll the coordinator call the roll on the approval of this contract for professional development for arts. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Escobedo? Yes. Ms. Jackson? No. Mr. Rollins? Yes. Mr. Scrivano? Yes. Mrs. McCulloch? Yes. The motion passes with six yeses and one no. Our second uh, action item is the strategic pl planning facilitator contract for Renaissance Gifted and Creative Performing Arts program that Dr. Reisman presented. Is our motion? Moved. Moved second. by Mr. Ellens. Second by Mr. Connor. Any questions or discussion? Now I have the coordinator call the roll on the approval of the contract for the strategic planning facilitator for Renaissance and Kappa. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Escobedo? Yes. Ms. Jackson? No. Mr. Rollins? Yes. Mr. Scrivano? Yes. Mrs. McCulloch? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. The motion passes with six yeses and one no. Our next action item is the resolution expressing official intent regarding certain capital expenditures to be reimbursed from proceeds of an obligation to, an, to be issued by Rockford Public School District 205. So moved. Got that. Second. All right, second. Is there any questions or discussions on that item? Now I have call, the coordinator call the roll on the approval of this resolution. Mr. Escobedo? Yes. Ms. Jackson? No. Mr. Rollins? Yes. Mr. Scrivano? Yes. Mrs. McCulloch? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Connor? Yes. The motion passes with six yeses and one no. Thank you. We'll move on to new business. Uh, administration has requested that the board suspend the rules to consider the following item. This is the resolution for building and disposal. Mr. Schmidt, uh, is there a motion and a second to suspend the rules for the board to consider this item? So moved. Second. Right, Mr. Connor, second. Any questions or discussion? Uh, please call the roll on the approval to go to suspend the rules. Ms. Jackson? Mr. Rollins? Yes. Mr. Scrivano? Yes. Mrs. McCulloch? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Escobedo? Yes. The motion passes with six yeses and one no. I'll now take a motion and a second to approve the resolution for building disposal. So moved. moved by Mr. Connor. Second. Second by Mr. Rollins. Any questions or discussion? Now I have the coordinator call the roll on the approval of the resolution for building disposal. Mr. Rollins? Yes. Mr. Scrivano? Yes. Mrs. McCulloch? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Escobedo? Yes. Ms. Jackson? No. The motion passes with six yeses and one no. Next uh, new business uh, is the student fees presentation by Marianne the Solon. Good evening. I just wanted to. Oh, oh you know what? Who sent me? Was I? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Should I try again? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, thank you for letting me speak tonight. I just wanted to present a quick overview of the student fees for, for the FY17 school year. Um, the fee review was presented to the operations and budget committees. And um, really, the district is if you look at the sheet that was present, provided to you, it's really the district's really in the middle of the pack, sort of where the fees land. And with that information in, in mind, we really were looking at just only three areas that we were thinking about increasing fees. One of the areas was for the student fee, the, excuse me, the student rental of musical instruments. And currently we're charging $30 for, for, that, for that rental. And as we did a review, it costs us roughly $80 
per instrument per year to maintain those instruments. So we really wanted to move that up to closer to what it actually costs us to maintain those instruments. So we were wanting to move it from $30 to $60. And then the other two areas, if you look at in the bottom portion of the, the fee information, these are both relate to high school. One of those fees is for um, the lifeguard do, the lifeguard course, the water safety lifeguard course, and that fee was moved to thirty-five dollars, is which which is exactly what we pay to the Red Cross for those services. And then the final area is for the the career tech ed area. Um, last year, those fees were between five dollars and twelve dollars. Those courses that are those for those fees, those are staying exactly the same. You can see in the next um, next area we have from five dollars to forty five dollars. These are brand new courses that are coming on, and so it's just the additional fees for those brand new courses. And those courses are a little more expensive. They're part of that project lead the way area. So th these are really the three areas that we're looking for changes. Are there any questions, Mr. Connor? In terms of the instrument rental fee. I certainly understand from the fiscal side why we want to raise it. Is there any provision for students that are in need that uh, would like an instrument and can't afford the fee? Right. If it, it's because it's a course, it's just like any any other fee. If they're a free and reduced lunch, or if, if they're a student that applies for a free a, a waiver, those fees are waived as well. Ah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Escobedo. So I think uh, one of the questions that were raised uh, when it was at the committee, I think Mr. Glenn Turpa, uh, was regarding you know the issues collecting some of these fees, and is you know are we getting to a point of diminishing returns where we're spending a lot of effort collecting fees, and is it really worth, you know? So I, I think uh, briefly asked it before, do we know how much time we're really spending collecting all these fees after you take into account you know processing everything else? And are we getting close to a point of where it may really not be worth collecting fees? Actually, we're really right in the middle of that review. What we're doing right now, this is the first year because of the, the district change, the food service um, program, which we're now in the community eligibility program, that CEP program, which where we did do the free and reduced lunch applications there. We're totally now changed that process in those that, in, that waiving of fees now landed in the business office. And so the way to be able to really figure out if that was more expensive, sort of this is our, this is our first year. To, so we're collecting that data right now, and we're looking into that process to see if it makes logical sense. I can say at this point, we've actually collected more fees this year than we have in the past years. So we're just really trying to collect that data and make sure we have good, solid information before we go that next step. I think, Mr. McCulloch, you might know the answer to my question. The bandwagon two effort by Community Foundation, was that for instrument rental? For, I don't remember what that program. No, that no. program was to supply yeah. instruments. Oh, okay. Right. And uniforms, too. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Any other questions for Marianne? Ms. Jackson. The athletic participation fee, is that per sport? Um, I yes, yeah, so it's the same as it has last year. That's no change from last so year. So per sport. So if you do basketball, football, you pay one hundred dollars each time, or is it just one fee? It's each each board is an additional fee. And I have been talking with Matt Parker, and he did wanted to change that fee around too, and so we're looking at that as well. Around to what? Uh, he was talking about maybe doing it so the kids do to you know pay for two sports and the third sports free so the spring to try and get more kids into the spring sports uh, do you have any idea of how it looks like freeport can offer their driver's ed so much cheaper than all the other districts do you know looks like um, it's all behind the wheel do you have any information on that i don't have the other information on the other districts i do know for our district we have a waiver and so you really have to for driver's ed whatever your waiver fee is that's the only price you can do. So I'm assuming that Freeport, um, I can look at Freeport here real quick. Um, yeah, so the, so their, their waiver is for $140, but it is based on the waiver that each school district sends to the state. Any other questions for Marianne? Thank you. This will come to our March 8th board meeting for approval then. Thank you. 
Are there any other comments or agenda items for the good of the cause tonight, Ms. Jackson? So moved. Uh, motion to uh, <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Mr. Connor. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, same sign. We adjourned at 7:55. Okay.